And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Well, I am taking what I call pastor's prerogative this weekend to veer off of the lectionary, the assigned readings for this Sunday, and go in a bit of a different direction. It is, after all, July 3rd, the day before Independence Day. We have a long three-day weekend. And it is a time where people think about and celebrate their freedom as Americans. We think back to the freedoms that were established for us when the country was founded, July 4th, 1776, and the dangers and difficulties and bloodshed that the Founding Fathers and succeeding generations went through in order to first procure our freedom and then defend it. And we do thank those in our congregation who have served in our armed forces to defend that freedom which was established so long ago. So there's going to be a lot of celebration this weekend and a lot of it celebrating the freedoms that we enjoy as Americans. Which is why I have chosen these readings and this topic for today to ask us to consider, are we truly free? And what does that mean? And I want to draw your particular attention to our reading in the New Testament from Romans chapter 6, and especially verses 16 and 18. Because as Paul suggests here, our freedom is not necessarily what we think it is. From verse 16, we get the idea that we are all slaves to something. We are all slaves to something, whether that is slaves to sin, which leads to death, or slaves to obedience, which leads to righteousness. So all of us, all of us, as much as we like to consider ourselves free, and we can do whatever we want, and go anywhere, and say anything, and do anything, Paul makes the point that, you know, not really. You're either a slave to sin, or you're a slave to righteousness. So what is the difference? What is the distinction between those two? And how do we know which camp we're in? Well, in John chapter 8, Jesus has a fascinating conversation with the Jewish leaders. And from John chapter 8, in verse 32, Jesus says that the truth will set you free. And that kind of sets off the Jewish leaders. They get angry. Well, how can you set us free? How can that set us free, they say? We're not slaves. We've never been slaves. We are children of Abraham. An interesting statement for them to make on two counts. One is, that was an out and out, I don't know if you'd call it a lie, but certainly a misrepresentation that they had never been slaves. The Jewish people were slaves for 400 years in Egypt until God sent Moses to deliver them from that slavery. And the Jewish leaders well knew this. So to say that they 
were not slaves or had never been slaves. It's just an out and out fabrication. But the other part of that statement is also interesting. And that is where they say, well, we are children or we are descendants of Abraham. We've never been slaves to anyone. We are children of Abraham. That is their way of puffing themselves up, of establishing their credentials. We are the true children of Abraham. We are the rightful heirs and descendants of all that God promised through Abraham. And that's what they're saying. That's what they're telling Jesus. His response to them is interesting as well. Because he says, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. It doesn't matter if you were born children of Abraham. The real issue is what's in your heart and what you're doing with your life. And if you continue to sin and live in sin, that is proof that you are a slave to sin. And that's absolutely something that they could not handle. All right, so what does all this mean? What is all this leading to? Uh, this reading from Romans and then this conversation Jesus has in John chapter 8. First of all, we must understand and accept that we are all born as slaves to sin. We are all born into spiritual slavery. That is, we are blinded to righteousness. We are born not as children of Abraham and not as children of God, but as children of Adam and Eve. And as children of Adam and Eve, we are inheritors of their original sin. And as such, we are sinners. We are born with a desire to satisfy the sinful cravings of our fleshly nature. That is who we are. We are all born slaves to sin. And slave is an interesting term for it. Because slave implies that there's nothing you can do about the situation. And that's exactly the point we need to remind ourselves of this morning. We are all born slaves to sin. And as slaves, we cannot change the situation. We cannot change the reality. And we cannot break out of it on our own. Every slave, I would think, would have a desire to change his or her situation, to escape, as it were, into freedom. And history is littered with slaves who have tried to do that. There's a very excellent short book in the New Testament. Short, it's only a page long. It's only one chapter long. It's the story of Philemon. Now Philemon is not the slave. Onesimus is the slave to Philemon. And to change his situation, he runs away. He runs away. And that was a very serious thing to do. Because slaves were considered property, he could have been punished. He could have been put to death. As it was, he was put into prison and ran into Paul, who converted him to Christianity and then sent him back to Philemon, not as a slave, but as a dear brother in Christ. So we would assume that all slaves want to change their situation. 
that they want to get out of slavery and into freedom. The problem we have is that we as slaves to sin cannot change our situation. No matter how hard we try, no matter what we do, no matter how much we promise to do better and to be better, we can't change it. That's the point Paul makes in Romans chapter 7, just a chapter after the one we're looking at, where he talks about the frustration of sin and trying to break out of the cycle, which he can't do. The things I want to do, I don't do those, he says. No, the things I hate, the things I want to do, these are the things I keep doing. And then he says, wretched man that I am. And that describes our spiritual situation. We are wretched, hopeless, because we can't change the situation that we are slaves to sin. We can't do it. But that leads us to the solution that God has provided for us. And that's Christ. Because Jesus can change the situation. He breaks us out of that deadly cycle by what He has done for us on the cross. By the shedding of His body and blood which we will celebrate again this morning in our communion. He's the one that can end that frustrating cycle for us. Because once we come to faith in Christ Jesus, we are no longer children of wrath. We are no longer children of Adam and Eve, but rather we are adopted into the family of God by grace. We become children of God. He has adopted children. And through faith, we are indwelt with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit, God Himself working in us, leads us to make decisions and choices to live as children of God and to live in righteousness rather than disobedience. It's all due to Jesus. Going back to that reading we talked about in John chapter 8, Jesus told the Jewish leaders, the truth will set you free. Well, Jesus is the truth. From John 14, 6, He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the truth that sets us free, that opens our eyes, that removes our spiritual blindness, that leads us out of slavery to sin to become, rather, slaves of righteousness. Christ has set us free to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. We could not break that cycle of sin, and we can't. So we turn to Jesus, who through what He has done for us on the cross, sets us free. We become adopted children into the family of God and slaves to righteousness rather than slaves to sin and death. Now at this point, you may be thinking, well, why do I have to become a slave to righteousness? If Jesus has set me free, then I should be able to do whatever I want because that's what freedom means. Think about that for a second, though. Do we really want total freedom? Think about what total freedom would mean. The freedom to do absolutely anything, anytime, anywhere that you wanted. I don't, I'm in a hurry. I don't want to pay attention to that traffic light, so I'm just going to speed through it. I should have the freedom to do that. Or I should have the freedom, after marrying someone, to fall in love with someone else and decide I'd rather spend my life with them. Total freedom is not a good thing. We have rules and restrictions and regulations that keep us safe. And it's the same way with God. Jesus did not 
set us free so that we could do anything we want. He set us free so that we might come to a spiritual awareness and serve Him willingly. Once we see who Jesus is and what He has done for us, the Spirit creates in us a desire to serve Him willingly, to become His slaves willingly. To put our lives and trust and hope in Him willingly and to obey Him willingly. Christ did not set us free so that we can do whatever we want. And Paul makes that point in Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, where he says, Do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, but rather use your freedom to love others. Don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Don't go backwards into sin. Christ set us free to open our eyes that we might see Him as He truly is and see Him for what He has done for us. That's what we're celebrating in communion this morning. The freedom that Christ has won for us through His body and through His blood. And knowing that, and knowing who He is and what He has done for us, the Holy Spirit works in us to create a desire to become slaves to righteousness, or in other words, slaves to Jesus. And we do this not out of compulsion, but out of love and an earnest desire to love him back who loved us so much that he gave his life for us. All of us, and here's the final point, all of us have choices to make in life. And we can choose what kind of slave we want to be. That's the choice all of us have to make. Because we're all slaves, one way or another. The choice that we face is what kind of slave are you going to be and who is going to be your master? And Paul lays it out there for us in Romans 6. You can choose to remain in spiritual blindness. You can choose to follow what you think is a path of freedom and choice, but actually is a path of misery and sorrow and death because your true master is Satan. Indulging the appetites of the flesh. Indulging your desire to get what you want now and not worry about anyone or anything else. There are plenty of people who have taken that road and still are on that road. But it is a road that leads only to death and destruction. Or, or, having now understood who Jesus is, the true Jesus, the real Jesus, and what he has done for you, and having your eyes opened from spiritual blindness, you can choose to become slaves to him. Not out of compulsion. Not out of someone, someone holding a gun to your head. But rather out of a desire to serve him. And to love him back. And to give back to him the life that he gave for you. That's the choice we all have. And that's the choice Joshua lays out in our Old Testament. And that's the choice we are reminded of again this morning. All of us have that choice. Who are you going to serve? 
Whose slave are you going to be? For me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Amen.